Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. So, I had planned to skip over making this video, even though I had done most of the testing already, and the reason for that is that there really isn't anything uh, particularly interesting or exciting to talk about in terms of performance improvements. However, since so many of you demanded an update, I decided to look into it, and at least we found one interesting thing along the way. So, yeah, hopefully it won't be a complete waste of time. Anyway, before we get too far into it, this video is brought to you by MSI and their new and upgraded workstation laptops. The MSI WS65 in particular is one that caught my attention, combining the excellent slim and light aesthetics of their gaming laptops with brand new NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 graphics. For professionals on the go that demand top-end performance, the WS65 also packs up to Intel Core i9 processors, loads of RAM, a 4K display, and even a fingerprint scanner for added security. To learn more, click the links in the description below. Okay, so if you're sitting there wondering what all the fuss is about this Windows 10 May update, well, let me explain. Apparently, Microsoft has done some work to the Windows kernel to improve CPU performance, and namely for Ryzen, and AMD even recently showed in their E3 livestream that the update is in fact uh, optimized for Zen, and it improves things such as topology awareness, and it speeds up clock ramping. The improved topology awareness means that Windows will focus on using cores within a CCX before using another CCX. So basically, they're teaming cores in the same CCX before spreading the workload to another CCX, as doing so comes with a latency penalty. And then the faster clock ramping means that Ryzen can get up to speed faster. With previous builds of Windows, AMD said it could take around 30 milliseconds for the CPU to ramp up to higher frequencies. So the update, along with an upcoming chipset driver, will take this to just one to two milliseconds for the chip to reach its top speed. AMD's also showed a slide claiming these fixes can boost gaming performance by up to 15%, while the faster clock ramping can yield a 6% improvement. And I think this is partly why Ryzen owners are so hyped about this update. However, as I understand it, these improvements aren't yet in effect, and they won't be till the Zen 2 processors arrive and we get the new chipset driver. Despite that though, there are claims all over the place from Ryzen owners of improved performance, but as far as I can tell, the gains shown have been limited to 3D Mark, and that's a synthetic benchmark application that we tend to avoid here at Harbour Unboxed. It seems Ryzen owners are seeing improvements in 3D Mark scores, and then just assuming those gains will transfer over to, well, real world games. So yeah, we'll look at that in a moment. But spoiler alert, if I hadn't already given it away with the uh, initial introduction to this video, the reason I was going to skip it was because all my results were within the margin of error. And I wasn't even confident if any of these Zen optimizations that AMD are talking about are actually active yet. And after speaking with the all-knowing Wendell of Level 1 Techs, if you haven't subscribed to Level 1 Techs, then I suggest you do it. I'll stick a link in the very description. But yeah, after speaking to Wendell, my suspicions were confirmed. At this point, it sounds like the Zen scheduler still isn't enabled in the 1903 build. And again, for this, you will need the AMD chipset driver. The improved clock ramping is also gonna be enabled by the upcoming chipset driver, and possibly even a firmware update will be needed there. Not 100% sure on that one. Wendell also told me that he's heard the Zen 3 architecture will have a hardware fix to address this issue, taking the current changes in the clock frequency from the current 30 plus milliseconds down to just one to two milliseconds. Anyway, as I said earlier, I wasn't going to make this video because there really isn't anything to report, at least in terms of performance, but due to the large volume of requests for an updated 1903 benchmark, I've decided to go ahead with the video. Actually, it wasn't just the sheer volume of requests, but rather all the misinformation I was seeing. Quite a few of you were telling me you've been told of big performance improvements with the new update on Ryzen. And since that isn't really the case, at least not yet anyway, I thought a video was probably necessary after all. So I took the Ryzen 7 2700X and Ryzen 5 2600X, tested them on Windows using the 1809 build, then I updated and tested with the 1903 build, and of course reran all the tests again. For the graphics card, I'm using the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti Aorus Extreme, and for the memory, a 16 gigabyte kit of G-Skills Flare X DDR4 3200CL14. So let's take a look at the results. Starting with Cinebench R20, we see similar scores for both processors using either version of Windows, 1809 or 1903. Honestly, I wasn't really expecting any changes to have any impact on this particular workload, but I know you guys will want some Cinebench scores anyway. Here we can also see that the single core performance was 
also the same. So again, no surprises here. Moving to WinRA, and we do see a 2% performance improvement for the 2700X, and this is of course based on a three run average. It's hard to say if the new Windows build is responsible for such a small gain. Uh, typically I'd consider 2% to be within the margin of error, and we can see that perhaps that is the case here, given the 2600X sees less than a 1% improvement. The last application I bothered to look at was Premiere. Again, nothing to report here, uh, less than a 1% difference for both CPUs. All up, I benchmarked 10 games with obviously both versions of Windows, and there were no noteworthy margins to speak of. So I'm not going to talk about each game because, as I said, there's really nothing to talk about. I'll just cycle through the graphs. You've probably seen a few of them by now. So we'll just do that, and then I'll wrap this up. At most, we saw a 2% difference in performance, and on occasion, the older 1809 build was faster. But again, we're talking about the margin of error here, or results that are within the margin of error. So... Yeah, honestly, there's no noticeable performance difference in any of the games tested. I had also seen some people claiming that the 1903 build improved performance of the first gen processors, so the original Zen processors. And I think that's because the slides that AMD showed uh, said Zen optimizations and not Zen Plus or Zen 2, but I th they just mean Zen in general, the Zen architecture, which encompasses all versions of Zen. So. Yeah, these updates aren't targeting or aren't providing bigger improvements for those with first gen Ryzen processors. But since I had the results for the Ryzen 5 1600, I thought I would take a look at the Ryzen 5 1600 on the 1903 build. And again, absolutely no difference in performance. I'm not going to show you guys those graphs because they're just more graphs that don't tell you anything particularly useful. But I can assure you that the first gen and second gen Ryzen processors all look the same. I will just say though, it's possible these Windows optimizations are currently offering noticeable gains for the higher core count Threadripper CPUs. Can't comment on that yet because I haven't tested them. Uh, I believe Wendell will be doing some testing with the 2990WX soon. Uh, but yeah, for now, not sure on that one. I've pretty much just focused on the AM4 CPUs. I also tested Armor 3 at the request of a few Patreon members. The hope here was that the update would help our performance in older titles where Ryzen struggles a bit, but yeah, sadly that wasn't the case, at least not yet anyway. Now, remember that slide from AMD that I showed earlier in the video that showed the Ryzen 7 3800X to be 15% faster with the May 2019 update when playing Rocket League? Well, I decided to go back and do the testing all over again, so install an 1809 build, then update it and do that for both the 2600X and 2700X, and well, that allowed me to test Rocket League, which I hadn't done previously. So I did this at 1080p using the high quality settings, again with an RTX 2080 Ti, and I also removed the 250fps frame cap. Sadly though, no 15% gain for the 2700X or the 2600X. Again, we'll probably need the new chipset driver for those kinds of gains. And then finally, moving on to one last thing. What are all these guys so excited about over on the AMD Reddit page? Improved 3D Mark scores, apparently. Firstly, I had to Google what 3D Mark was, then download a program on Steam that simulates a game, but isn't a game. Weird shit, I know. And once I ran this, mysterious program, a few numbers were spat out in my favorite web browser. Okay, so I'll cut the crap. I know what 3D Mark is, but as I said, we just don't use it on the channel. Anyway, to my surprise, yeah, 3D Mark scores were boosted significantly with the 1903 update. And here I was thinking all the bots on Reddit spent too much time looking at porn on their PCs and they were infested with malware. Apologies to the r slash AMD community. Some of our Patreon members also saw the same thing, uh, big gains for the total and physics scores in 3D Mark, but zero improvement for every other game and application they tested, at least nothing that was out of the margin of error. So if you're asking yourself, well, what gives here? I don't have any real answer for you. I guess either 3D Mark was broken on Ryzen previously, or more likely there's a bug with 3D Mark when using the new version of Windows. Either way, doesn't really matter too much as the performance uplift seen here when running 3D Mark has no bearing on real world gameplay. So yeah, that is a bit of a shame. Overall, it seems there's really nothing to see here. So yeah, sorry if you feel I've wasted your time on this one, just showing you graphs with margin of error differences. Like I said, I was going to completely skip this video as the testing was uninteresting. I'd done it anyway, but yeah, it 
what didn't really make for an exciting video. But yeah, with so many people now hitting me up on Twitter and comment section on YouTube and pretty much everywhere over the last few days freaking out about these alleged improvements, I thought it probably made sense to make the video anyway. Hopefully we will see some improvements in the not too distant future once we get the new chipset driver. I'm not 100% clear on how that will be rolled out. Uh, there are suggestions that it's being rolled out by the Windows update. Some people may have it already, but I haven't seen anyone showing any gains in, well, any applications or games outside of 3D Mark. And then a few people have shown Cinebench R15 scores to have changed, but again, they're really within the margin of error. So. Yeah, if, if there are any changes or anything uh, different to what we found here, then yeah, I'll certainly update this information in a future video. But as far as we can tell at this point, you shouldn't be seeing any major performance improvements with the 1903 update with a Ryzen processor. So for now, it just seems to be a bit of a hype train. So these Windows updates are often followed by uh, runaway hype trains. Back in late 2017, we did derail the full creator update that was said to improve performance by an insane 20%. In reality, it was more like 0%, somewhere around there. It was only a couple of percent at best. So consider this hype train derailed once again. Also, please note that these windows and driver optimizations aren't meant to improve things that much. It'll certainly help a bit, but you won't see the massive performance gains that are being reported by, well, programs such as 3D Mark, for example. It's not uncommon that when these new Windows updates are rolled out that people see performance improvements. And for the most part, people who are seeing these performance improvements are seeing them because there was actually something wrong with their previous install of Windows and the update corrects that. So those with a clean operating system like what we've tested with here today, they should see little to no performance change. So again, if you are seeing some sort of big change or a particular game is showing improvements, don't necessarily assume that that's the 1903 update. It could just be that there was something wrong previously. Of course, this time creating a bit of extra excitement and confusion was 3D Mark, but I've explained what I think's going on there. And again, those results don't transfer over to any other real world applications or games. So. Yeah, just a synthetic benchmark doing synthetic benchmark things. But hopefully we can put that one to rest now. Still, it will be interesting to see what improvements this upcoming AMD chipset driver uh, might deliver. But yeah, I wouldn't be expecting any miracles. We're not expecting to see any huge changes here. Just a nice little performance bump where perhaps Ryzen needed it most. But again, we'll just have to wait and see what really happens when we get that driver. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate what we do here on Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. This video ended up being quite a bit of work, quite a lot of installing Windows, updating Windows, reinstalling Windows, updating Windows, doing all that kind of stuff. I didn't just roll back to go back and forth on the testing because that can cause other problems. So yeah, a lot of hours were wasted installing and updating Windows and then not to mention all the applications required for testing. So if you appreciate that, you can jump over to our Patreon account and that also gives you access to our Discord chat. We can chat to you guys while we're doing this kind of testing, see what you're seeing and sort of work with you on that one. And actually our Patreon members were very helpful on this one because they were also seeing the big 3D Mark performance uplift as I, as I said, but they weren't seeing gains anywhere else. So. I suppose also thank you to our Patreon members who helped me on this one. As always, we very much appreciate you guys. Anyway, thank you to everyone who watched this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>